We're now going to show you how to place the sensors correctly and to check that we're getting good signals so that we can make a recording with the paw track. The first thing to do is to clean the skin where the sensor is going to be placed on the neck and on the chest. Make sure there's good contact. Just clean the skin slightly like that and here on the chest so we now have a suitable area. I'll show you how to place the sensor in the adhesive acoustic pad. The color sensors are color coded. The red sensor goes on the trachea, the yellow sensor goes on the chest, and the color part goes inside the adhesive acoustic pad in this fashion, so that the plain side, which is the sensor side, goes next to the skin. In order to place the sensors correctly, we have to define the anatomical landmarks. For the tracheal sensor, we have defined the following landmarks. The suprasternal notch, which is just here, and the larynx, which is here, and we define the midline here. And the sensor has to be placed in the anterior triangle, so it's anterior to the sternomastoid, which is this muscle here, and we're going to place it just about here with the edge of the sensor just on the midline. So now I take the sensor for the trachea and I peel off the backing tape. Okay. And I'm going to again check my landmarks, sternum asteroid, sternum notch, midline of the trachea. So I'm going to place the edge of that sensor in the midline anterior to the sternomastoid there. And then I apply tension to the two wings of the adhesive backing and connect them that way. So the sensor is being pressed appropriately against the skin. The chest sensor is placed on the right side in the second intercostal space. And here we have identified the clavicle. We feel the first rib here. So the second is got the space here. And we put it in the mid-cavicular line here. If we're dealing with a, a subject who has a lot of hair on the chest, we recommend shaving the chest first before cleaning it and placing the sensor. So now I'm going to remove the backing from the chest sensor. Again, I'll check my landmarks, the second intercostal space here. Again, applying tension to the two wings, and place the sensor on the chest in that fashion. Respiration is recorded using a respiratory belt, which is placed around the chest at the level of the insertion of the diaphragm. This is the level of the xiphoid, and in a woman is placed just below the level of the breasts. So, this round here. Let it begin, I'll lift it up a little bit. And it needs to have a reasonable amount of tension so it doesn't slip up and down. Uh, so place a little bit of tension, but obviously not too much, making sure that it doesn't slip. Once the sensors are in position, we now check the computer screen in this section to see if we have adequate recording. The bar here shows the signal from the pneumogram with inspiration up and expiration down. So as she breathes you can see it going up and down. These two bars are from the sensors. This is the volume of sound from the tracheal sensor and the volume of the sound from the chest sensor. As is quite normal the volume of sound from the tracheal sensor is much more than from the chest sensor, but I can see that both are moving. This bar here shows the volume of sound from the ambient microphone, which is situated in the pod, and it's showing a lot of ambient noise because I'm talking at the moment. If I stop talking for a moment, you'll see that the ambient sound is quite very quiet. I'm now going to ask our volunteer to take a couple of deep breaths so you can see how the signal moves. Take a couple of deep breaths, please. Inspiration and expiration. This is the tracheal sensor 
from the chest sensor. If the ambient noise becomes very loud, you'll see this bar go red. Ah! Sorry about that. But that's a demonstration that if that happens, we wouldn't make recording with that level of sound. The system is in fact designed to reject environmental noise and it can operate perfectly well providing that the environmental noise is not too great. You just saw a demonstration of very loud environmental noise. It's important when you're making the recording to be sure that there is not unnecessary and excessive noise around. Obviously if the patient speaks that will disturb the recording. The other people around can speak but preferably to keep their voices down. If there's any music playing nearby that can interfere and of course medical instruments that are nearby and making a lot of noise will also interfere. So the less environmental uh, noise uh, around the better because it could result in loss of signal. What you also need to remember is that the environmental microphone captures everything that's being said in the environment and so if you don't wish something you're saying to be recorded for um, perpetuity, then you should keep your voice down very quiet or not say it at all.